Here are five tips to help you quickly level up your motion graphics work. We're gonna talk about how to boost the design value of your project all the way down to animation ideas. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps us out tremendously. And let's jump in and talk about how to level up our motion graphics. I would like to mention that the ideas we're gonna talk about in this video can be translatable over to other editing software like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. So this is not just bound to Adobe After Effects. So the first idea I wanna talk about is a design trick to help spruce up your compositions. So for example, here we have these side graphics that make a huge impact on our work. So for example, if I remove them, our work is gonna have a little bit less detail, but by having some side graphics into your image, whether that's in form of text or general graphics or a logo, is going to help create some balance in your work. And it also adds a little bit of a nice aesthetic design value to it as well. And we take a look at another example here by using these side graphics, it definitely makes it look like we did more work than we did. And it takes away from the plainness of this composition. So without the graphics here, it looks very clean, but we have a lot of white space around our composition. So it's really up to you how you want to use techniques, but by adding some side graphics, it definitely makes a big impact on your work. So the second idea I want to talk about is your text or graphic size. So for example, here, if I go ahead and make this full screen, Screen. We have our center text here, and at first glance, something this big is kind of hard to read right away. So what I mean by this is that you need to consider viewing distance uh, when creating your work. So for example, everyone's going to be looking at your uh, work at a different uh, distance to their screen. So for example, if someone's watching your video on a phone and they have it far away from their face, you know, this text will probably look just fine. But if your work is being broadcasted on TV, and you know someone's close to their 60 inch TV, this title is gonna be harder to read versus something that's gonna be smaller, you know, like this. So you need to consider where your work is going. So if it's going on YouTube, you know, larger text should be okay. Uh, but if, you know, if your work is gonna be broadcasted, obviously in theaters or um, on TV, you need to consider the text size because right here, I can look at this title all at one glance without having to move my eyes. So that's something you need to consider. I wanna take a look at a more extreme example here. So we have this big piece of text taking up the entire composition um, and it's definitely not user friendly to read this. But if we scale it down and take a look at it at a smaller view, I can read this entire thing very easily without having to move my eyes or my head. So take into consideration if you really are worried about readability, smaller text will be easier to read versus you know, text that take up a larger portion of the screen. All right, so the third idea we need to talk about is how to approach a full motion graphics project. How do you do it? So for example, a lot of people are gonna create their first graphic and then animate it right away. The very first thing you should do in your project is create all the graphics that you need and lay it out first before you animate anything. This way you'll know where everything goes and it's also a much faster workflow because you're thinking about design first. You're gonna get all those elements out of the way and then you're only thinking about animation. So once your layout's done, then you can approach the animation of all your graphics. And then the third step in the motion graphic process is to then offset your layers if you need to do that. So then we can come here, offset the layers really quick. So then not everything's coming in at the same exact time and you'll be able to make those decisions much easier. And then the last step is to do your finishing touches. So this could be overall composition effects like noise, vignettes, or anything that's going to affect the overall composition. So just to recap, your animation process should look at layout, animation, offset, and final touches. So our fourth motion graphic trick is really bound to After Effects and a few other you know motion graphic softwares, but it's simply being able to control the animation flow of your entire project. So for example, by default, when you add a keyframe, it's going to be a linear keyframe. And simply is there's going to be no control over the speed of your project. All the graphics will be animating in at the same speed throughout the entire animation. And a lot of people like to select their keyframes and just hit F9 to make it easy ease. And this will help create a little bit of contrast in the animation speed of your project. But honestly, I don't see much of a difference between easy ease and linear. So if you watch our tutorials, you know that we'll select our keyframes coming into graph editor. And then underneath our edit speed graph, we're gonna go ahead and select those keyframes. And we have these handles here and we can move these handles to adjust the speed of the animation. So I like to bring them in all the way in the center to create a snapping animation. So from here, we're gonna have a very slow start and slow end to the animation, but it's gonna have a very fast pace of the animation in the center of the keyframes. So here's a before and after with linear keyframes and the animation keyframes that we did. So be sure to go ahead and create your style of animation with the graph editor. So the fifth and final motion graphic trick that I wanna talk about is being able to animate in your scene or animated out with a very quick matte swipe. So instead of revealing onto like a white background or something or any generic background, what you can do is take all your layers, go to layer, pre-compose, and just pre-compose everything. And then you can quickly come here, grab the rectangle tool, and just draw out a rectangle to fill up your composition like so. And simply you can hit P on keyboard for position, add a keyframe for it, uh, and move it forward in time, you know, maybe to like 12 frames or something, be really quick, and just have this move off the composition like so. 
And as before, we'll go ahead and make these easy ease and do that quick graph editor animation. And all we need to do is toggle search the modes until we get a track mat. And for the pre-composed layer, we set the track mat to alpha mat. So here we'll have this nice quick swipe for a great in animation for our entire composition. It's really quick and easy to do that. And it does add a little bit of value to your work. And to close out our video, if you're looking to save time while producing awesome work, we have over 15,000 templates for you to use in After Effects and Premiere Pro. With the Motion Duck extension, you can preview, apply, and modify any of the templates within a few clicks. Be sure to check our links in the description below to take a look at all the template packs that we have. And of course, you can download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro packs as well. Those links are in the description below. Here we are at the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed these tips. Please be sure to leave your own tips if you have any inside of After Effects when working with motion graphics. So this way we can have even more ideas on this video. If you're new to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We post multiple post-production tutorials every single week. And always be creating.